If you want to be a great Excel user, you have to know how to work with dates. In this video, I'll show you a few popular date formulas to help you out. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. As always, don't forget to download the data linked at the top of the description so you can work along with me. And once you have the data open, come to the tab labeled refunds. As you can see over here, we have a table of sales data, including the sale ID, the sale date, delivered, and the days sent sale. And then if you come over here to the right, you can see we have a rule. If delivery takes longer than 20 days, issue a refund. Let's size that up a little bit so you can see it. If you downloaded the data, you won't have any sell dates here because I will be working with this data a different day than you are, but feel free to put in your own dates or just put in the same dates that I have right here. Just know that when we get to the days since sell, you'll get some different outcomes than I do. So basically we want to see how long it's been since each sell from the sell date until today. That way we know if it's been at least 20 days and someone hasn't gotten their delivery yet, we know if we need to issue them a refund. This kind of gets into what I do most of the time when I'm working with dates, and that is taking the difference between two dates. One example of this might be you want to find the difference of time between when an order was created and when the product was shipped. But regardless of the circumstance, I can almost guarantee at some point you're going to want to find the difference between two dates. The cool thing is, all you have to do to find the difference between two dates is to subtract the earlier date from the later date. And to do that for this problem, we are going to use the today function. The today function is very simple. All you have to do is put today and then an open and close parentheses, and then we'll automatically populate with today's date. But again, for us, we aren't quite done. We want to find the difference between the sell date and today's date. So all we have to do is subtract the sell date from today's date. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, sometimes this might come out in a weird format, but since we are trying to find a numerical value, the day since sell, let's just come up here to our format tab and we are going to make this a number. Now, all we have to do is drag this down and now we have the days since sell for each of these. Now to answer our question, if a refund should be issued, we can easily come over here and see that there are three orders where the item has not been delivered. However, it's been at least 20 days since the sell. So we're going to give refunds to these three sell IDs. Normally, you probably won't be using the today formula. So just to be ultimately clear, let me show you if we were just subtracting any dates, it's exactly the same. We will subtract the earlier date from the later date, hit enter, and then we get the same answer. But again, for this problem, it was easier just to have the today in our formula. Now what I've just shown you is 95% of how I use formulas to work with dates, but let me show you a couple other formulas that might be helpful. Now let's assume we want to find the number of months between today's date and the sell date. To do that, we are going to use the date diff function or formula. So for this one, first we're going to enter the first date. Next we're going to enter the today formula. Remember you got to have an open and close parenthesis. And now for our last argument, since we want to find month, we will just put a capital M between two parentheses or two quotation marks and hit enter. Okay, this formula doesn't actually like that we are using the today formula. So let me really quickly come down here and just do the today. So that will give us today's formula. So now let's come back up here. And again, we're going to put in our first date. Let's put in our second date. And now we're going to put M in double quotations and hit enter. Now, as you can see, this gave us the number of months, but let's go ahead and turn this one into an absolute cell reference by hitting function and then F4. And now if we pull this down, we can see that it actually just rounds down to the nearest month. There might be a situation where this is useful, where you just want to see the month rounded down between two dates, but let me show you a couple of other options. Next, I'm going to show you the year frac formula. All you got to do is type year frac after the equal sign and then an open parentheses. Now if we put in our two dates, let's first put in the sell date and then let's see if this one will let us use the today's date. Okay, it still doesn't like that. So let's come back here and let's put this here instead. So this one gives us the fraction of the year. And again, let me come up here and make this an absolute cell reference. So as you can see, this gives us the part of a year that are between the two dates. All of these are obviously very small fractions because all of these are like less than a month. So the 
the biggest number is basically one over 12, but we can also use this to find the number of months or the number of weeks. So if we wanna find the number of months, all we gotta do is take this number and multiply it by 12 because there are 12 months in a year. And now we have the number of months in a fractional form. So that first formula, the date diff only rounds down, but you can use this if you wanna find the fraction of a month it's been between, for us, the cell date and today's date. And if you wanted to, you could even do this all in one formula. You could just put an asterisk and then a 12. And let's go ahead and change this back to a number and pull this down. Now it messed with this H column, but now we have the number of months between the two dates to the nearest fraction. And you can come up here and mess with the decimal places as much as you want. If you wanna learn more about different formulas, you can come over here to the formulas tab and click on date and time. And here is a good place where you can just play around, look at all of these different formulas. Again, I haven't used many of these. Most of the time when I'm working with dates, I'm literally just subtracting one date from another to find the days in between, or I can convert that to weeks, months, years, whatever I need. But come over here and check it out just so you know what's available to you. Anyway, I hope this video helps. If you want to become a great Excel user, be sure to go check out all the other Excel videos in my Excel for Beginners playlist. And whether you want to be a great Excel user or a data analyst, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I post a brand new video every single week helping you become the best data analyst or Excel wizard that you can be. And with that, I'll see you next week.